First thing to talk about straight away, as I saw on the fucking Fire and the Kids subreddit, well, I want to get the full context of this. So, to give you a bit of a preface, um, Brenda Shub's wife, Joanna, is currently, was, was pregnant, right? And they're having their third kid, and it's going to be a girl. There's something they've been kind of working up for, working to for a while, um, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, and recently, she had to go get an emergency C-section, according to Brendan, um, because there were some complications with the pregnancy. And now the kid has been born, if I'm not mistaken, four weeks or something premature. I'm not too sure if this is like a, if four weeks is a lot of time, but I think, I imagine it's not a good thing, right? In this sort of situation, when your wife gets rushed to the hospital because of high blood pressure and the baby has to come out because they don't want to risk anything crazy happening. And Brendan announced this on the Shub Show. Now, I've seen the clip on the Fire and the Kids subreddit and it's really disturbing because he announces it and it's like, it's almost like as if he's talking about somebody else. It's almost like as if he's talking about another person he read online, a fighter's wife or some story he saw on social media. It doesn't seem like it's something concerning him. And it's really odd when you think about his reaction to when he saw... Um, to when he learned about Crystal Lea's cancelling, right? The way he was sobbing on the fire and the kid or the way he was sobbing on the Shub show when Chin played that video that he commissioned himself, Brendan, of all his fa all of his friends and family thanking him for the cracking Gringo Pappy. What we have to do. How was you guys Thanksgiving weekend? Great. That is fantastic. Chin, Case, what'd you guys do? Family, just family. Just a normal turkey. <laughs> We had kimchi, we had some Korean food, but mostly... Turkey with kimchi? Yeah. All right. That's that, what we that, do every that year. That helps with digestion, right? <laughs> kind of, but you know what messes me up the most, and I love the most, is Dropping. stuffing. No, stuffing. Oh, really? But it, it, I was just telling Casey, it messes my body up bad afterwards. You'd like farting. No. I like how you can tell they don't have any conversations outside of the podcast, right? He's only friends or people he has to speak to about this, like, normie stuff are people that he pays. Do you know how sad that is? They don't even try and like do a little routine, like run from bits. Like, hey, I'm going to ask you about your fucking, you know, about your Thanksgiving. I'm going to fuck up your name again. I'm going to say Pimchi instead of Kimchi. They don't even like run through some bits. It's just this dry, weird conversation. It almost feels like, you know, when you go on like on a, have you ever been at work and not a weekend, you know, when you go on like a two week holiday and you're at work and you come back and usually, I don't know if you remember this, but again, I'm going to keep stopping because I'm a fucking annoying, but do you remember, right? When you're at work and you go on holidays you, you you notice it very quickly but basically what you learn very quickly is that you shouldn't really share your holiday details with your colleagues and how fun it was because they don't really want to know when people ask you about how good your holiday is they don't really want to know details they want to know like the surface level i had a good time saw my family we had a good and just move on because if anything they're probably silently hating the fact that you was able to go maybe they've used up all their holiday or vacation maybe they can't go because they have no money right but you're not meant to really get into detail about it. You're just meant to do like a surface level conversation. But sometimes it can be unavoidable. And you sometimes, you know, you end up in a lock in the fucking locker room or whatever, not locker room. You end up in a fucking, you know, staff room with your colleagues and somebody asks you, hey, how was your holiday, Agostino? And you get into it. Oh, my Lanzarote was amazing. Ibiza was fun. Um, you know, uh, Leon in, in France was a, a sensational. And then you're noticing this really awkward, clunky conversation that's not really going anywhere and that's the same thing with them i feel like it's that weird clunky like how was your holiday great how's your mum? awesome <laughs> your girlfriend she's superb the wife great the dog still alive <laughs> well, indigestion you farting <laughs> yeah whatever In case what'd you do got the whole squat the, the... i was farting man <laughs> who the fuck is that who the fuck is that guy who the fuck is that who is that where this guy come from this guy is like, how many staff does he have at his fucking podcast studio? And the podcast is so shit and terribly done. He has like a million staff. Like, who the hell is this guy? He came out of fucking nowhere, innit? Slamming that stuff. And of course, he's got a Diet Coke on the fucking table, innit? Right? Diet Coke. Do they sponsor fucking the Thick Boy Short Show Empire? Who knows? I you just ripping them. <laughs> You were with the fam? Yeah, down in San Diego. Diego. Yeah, they got the little kids. So, like, you know, I'm with the bros. So, we're up late drinking wine. And then the kids are like, we don't care. It's five. Let's play. Yep. Like, Yo, Hasib, don't ask why we're up if we're in the UK. Don't ask questions about why we're up. Just enjoy the fucking content, brother. We're up. Like, I am up because we can't go to sleep. Because we're fucking psychos. Because we have no lives. And because we enjoy pointing and laughing at people who are far more successful and rich than we are. Isn't it fun? 
Just point and laugh, sir. Don't ask too many questions. Questions are lame. Who wants details? Who wants analysis? Who wants fucking specifics? Just fucking point and laugh like the rest of us. All right. Life is miserable for us day to day. So the one thing that brings us joy is laughing at others who have more than us. It's fucking great. It's fucking amazing. Embrace it, brother. Embrace it. Okay, right on. <laughs> kids, kids do not sleep in, dog. I don't care. They don't sleep in. I had an eventful uh, Thanksgiving. Didn't really get a Thanksgiving. Uh, most of you know this. My girl's been pregnant for a hot second. I didn't get a Thanksgiving. You see how weird that is? I didn't get a Thanksgiving. Like, my Thanksgiving was ruined because my wife decided to have a premature fucking birth. Ugh, so annoying. Do you understand? Is that a bit strange? A bit of a sent amount. Again, maybe I'm nitpicking. But it's not a weird way to kind of start a segment where you're talking about your wife being rushed to hospital for an emergency C-section. You're like, oh my God, here we go. I couldn't even fucking have my Thanksgiving. I had to miss out on a mac and cheese. I had to miss out on my collard greens. Like, not again. Come on, Joanna. Why can't you just give birth normally? It's almost like he's upset that she got ill or something. <laughs> Second now. And the baby was supposed to come like mid-late December. And then the baby said, nah, you got Thanksgiving plans? I don't care. I'm, I want out. And I want out now. Also, isn't this the first time you've heard him mention in detail this baby's preg the, the pregnancy? Maybe it's a on purpose thing. Maybe Brendan's learned from the previous pregnancies and children because they've been all over social, isn't it? I think his other kids have social media accounts. The wife posts them all, all the time on their social. So maybe they've purposely decided with the daughter, because it's a girl, they're going to try to be a little bit more considerate and a little bit more private with her, maybe. But he doesn't really talk about it. You know, this is the first time I've heard him talk about it in detail. And again, if she got rushed to hospital, I'm assuming most likely there was issues before. And again, I don't know nothing about it. If you're, if you're a lady in the chat, please let me know. But I'm assuming if you have, if you have a premature pregnancy, most likely there were things leading up to it. I'd imagine maybe some complication. Maybe you had to go in a few times. Maybe there were some things happening. So the fact that we haven't heard anything from them, maybe he's telling us they're trying to keep it closed, you know, close to their chest. Or maybe he just didn't give a fuck to share it. But we're just hearing about it now. Who knows? Oh. So on Monday, she went in for just a routine checkup. And then I was like, yo, what time are you coming home? She's like, I don't know. They're like having me do these other tests. I'm like, what's up? She's like, my blood pressure is kind of high. I'm like, what's kind of high? She's like, it's like 180. I'm like, 180 over what? She told me. They're having me come in. So he didn't go with her to get the blood test done. Is he talking like, she, she, she what, called him? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're having a daughter, the first one you've had, right? With your wife you're gonna round off your family because i'm assuming they're probably gonna lock up the shop right they're probably gonna have three kids and that's probably done right they've got their perfect sort of like american dream family done so you've got your thing done you got your daughter you got your two kids cool if it's your first i'd imagine it's quite a special moment this isn't it right having a daughter for that because i don't think brendan has sisters either so it's the first time you're gonna have like a woman in your family right a little girl a little princess so i'd imagine it's kind of a special occasion you want to kind of wrap your wife up in cotton wool wherever she goes you go annoyingly you're going to follow her to the fucking toilet you're going to follow her to the soup you're going to go to the you know the sh the fucking um the weekly shop runs you're opening doors you're just everywhere you're just kind of like you're just a you know a protection around her right all the fucking time so why is he hearing about it via text or phone call this is strange again maybe i heard it wrong but it seems odd i mean i was like oh that's not safe She's like, yeah, apparently they're freaking out. I'll keep you posted. Also, this blood pressure thing, not to be this guy, but I remember seeing a post on the Friday Kids sub, which again, I don't like talking about Joanna on here because I feel like, you know, Brendan's a redact. He's the fucking donkey that you should point out and laugh. His wife and his children aren't people that we should kind of get involved with and stuff. So I don't really agree with the posting of her on social and taking a piss out of her. But I do remember seeing a post on the Friday Kids subreddit where she was talking about not liking water. Do you remember that? There was a post about her, oh, I hate to drink water and stuff. And I was thinking, so hold on. If you're pregnant, shouldn't you drink, shouldn't you be hydrated? Again, no idea about pregnancies. I don't have any children, right? <laughs> I had to think there. Hold on. Do I have kids? No, I don't, right? But I don't have any children, right? <laughs> I'm assuming, like, being hydrated is a big part of it. So I wonder how much that lack of hydration played into it. I'm like, we didn't think it was anything. 
Next call I got in the middle of the night was like, hey, they got to do emergency surgery now. I'm like, what? So he was at home while his wife is at hospital. What do you think is going on there? No, Sarlux, never going to wash my mouth. Never watching my mouth when it comes to fucking Dua Lipa. She dances like a transit van, sir. She kind of dances like... I don't want to say what it is because I'll get banned, but you know what I mean, Sarlux. You know what, how she dances. Again, to be fair, I've heard somebody told me in the comments that Dua Lipa's six foot. That might be the reason why. She's very tall for a lady and very kind of ungangly wise, but she dances bizarre. Like, she... I don't want to say how, but you know what? You know what I'm thinking in my head, Sarlux. You know what I'm thinking in my head. What? So I rushed over there. Sure enough, they had to do that emergency C-section. So he was at home watching ESPN <laughs> while his wife got rushed to the hospital, getting all the fucking blood work done. He was at home eating Postmates, chilling with his kids, playing catch. Right? Mums are in, fucking around. Right, eating cereal out from the box, right? Mum's not around and shit. No tamales, Domino's pizza for the boys. And then he rushed up to later on down. Like, God, I, I get it, it's different because they've got two kids. Maybe you have to stay and look after them. But Jesus Christ, surely get the grandma, you know, get the mother in law to come over and, you know, look, up, look after the kids while you go and fucking sit with your wife, right? Maybe. Who knows? That critter out of there. But she's, uh, you know, she's a Hold on. How do you So I rushed huh? over there. Sure enough, they had to do that emergency C-section. Got that critter out of there. They got that critter out of there. Again, the disassociation, the not even, there's no name for the, again, maybe he doesn't want to share the name. Maybe he want, he'd want to keep the name private. The critter. Critter. That's how you refer to your unborn baby or about to be born baby from a C-section. You call it a critter. You have to get that shit out of there. Yikes. But she's a, you know, she's a preemie. So she's about. <laughs> <laughs> she's a preemie. The baby's a preemie. Have you ever heard anybody refer to a premature baby as a preemie? <laughs> it's fair enough if you if you were a premature baby yourself. There's maybe some people in the chat who are premature babies. I might be a premature baby the way that I'm a bit ooh -hoo, crazy, right? I'm the crazy guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> maybe but surely if you're the one having kids you don't refer to your kid that's premature that's getting tested and shit that's in the incubator and you know assessment of it because i'm sure hospitals take you know extra precautions when it comes to newborns and shit right again i'm just talking about my ass here as a fucking male i don't know anything that happens with that kind of thing but i would assume there's loads of tests loads of analysis bloody blah 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 to make sure that, that kid's okay to go home right with the parents and shit but surely it's a stressful moment. It's like a really tense moment. Again, you're not sure what's going to happen. It's very nerve-wracking. You don't have the baby straight away. There's loads of things going on there. The mum has doesn't a chance to touch shit and stuff, you no know, skin to skin, all this sort of stuff. Critter. Preemie. Four weeks early. There's complications with that. There's complications with... Oh, Brandon's saying preemie is actually commonly used on here in Canada. Wow, bro, Yo, you Canadians are fucking brutal, isn't it? Preemie. You guys are have good. You are, you guys are all cheerful and happy, go lucky and shit. But you refer to your premature baby as preemie. I love places like Canada because you'd imagine under under those smiles and that kind of you know warm disposition, you'd imagine there's a sinister thing lying on, underneath there, isn't it? There's a sinister edge under Canadians. Like they're probably all happy, go lucky, nice people. But if you piss them off, they will fucking hit you over the head with a shovel and bury you with it. <laughs> <laughs> the blood blood pressure of wifey because with that high blood pressure they can pass out it's dangerous for the baby so that's why they decided to get the baby out of there but um you know they have to give her some sort of they have to get the baby out of there as if like his wife is just some like a vessel to pop out babies like they had to get the baby out of there. like she it was in like an incubator or something like god almighty like do we not care about the wife do we care about the baby? Is the baby just is the baby just a, a human being you you can put like pink Balenciaga on or something? Like what's going on here? It wasn't blood pressure medication, it was like a magnesium, but I guess that can affect the baby too. I guess. <laughs> 
I guess this guy knows more. So he knows more about Happy Hito, Happy Hippo, and Kratom and shit than he does know about the ins and. Outs. Again, I don't know. I don't have kids, but surely if you're having a baby and it's it's you know it's gonna be due soon or whatever, you just know details about you know pregnancies. You know some information because you and your wife are going through the same experience, so you just know some shit. It's like when you're, it's like criminals, right? Most criminals know a lot about the court system they know about a lot about the prison system right eerily enough they know about charges they know about term times they know about conviction rates they know about representation it's it knowledge because you're in that scene right you're a fucking criminal so you know all that stuff i imagine if you have a kid you just know about kid shit you know what affects them what doesn't affect them um good practices to have a healthy baby and a good pregnancy <sighs> So they had to give it to her just in case because her blood pressure is so freaking high. So that affects the baby. So the baby comes out and uh... <laughs> the baby comes out like, what's going on, man? What's up? What's up? <laughs> what's up, Dallas? <laughs> The baby's good. <laughs> What's good, Brandon? <laughs> I need a Hermes bag. Um, it was different than my other two kiddos because they were giants when they came out and they were they were cooking for the expected time before that. My two previous babies were cooking. Bro, is he referring to his kids like he's putting a pizza into like a fucking preheated oven or something? Put it on fucking 170 <laughs> and lower it to 150 to get it that. And I think when you get, it's a pre, if it's a frozen pizza, I like to have mine preheated at 200 and then I bring it down to 180 and then I bring it down to 170. You just what I do. Two, the 200 pre, preheated oven, 10 to 15 minutes. That's me, right? Fat boy shit. Then you put it in and then you lower it to 170 and then put it 150. And then you get that perfect, like the best. And also make sure when you put your pizza, frozen pizza into the oven, make sure you put it on the on the rack that's obviously got spaces in between so they can obviously cook the fucking base. Usually I put that board on anything. You know how it's you you know what one. That turkey was done. Referring to your un referring to your kids as turkeys. Let's go back again. It's fucking crazy. Giants when they came out and they were they were cooking for the expected time before that turkey was done. And so <laughs> when you it's a preemie baby, there's a it's different. Like preemie baby, like it's a box logo baby, isn't it? Supreme. Oh man, the fucking baby drop is like in two weeks, but it's not a North Face collabo. <laughs> the preemie drop, isn't it? There's a queue outside. <laughs> the baby was in the the this like bubble the whole time, like doing all this stuff. This bubble, huh? Is that what it's called? The bubble. The the, 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 the baby was in the bubble during the pandemic, right? With all the fucking Do you remember that? NBA, by the way. Fuck, you know, that was a dark time, innit? Do you remember that? When they had that screen on the side where all the fans were like digit were like on Zoom cheering cheering the fucking players, that was a dark time in it. The fucking bubble, fucking NBA championship. I I read a lot of people don't. I read that a lot of people don't refer to that as like a legit championship either, right? They, I think some people kind of discount it because it's a fucking whole different sort of game. But yeah, that's fucking incredible. Stuff they they they're smaller, and then it's weird because you go from that to. Like I said previously with my two other uh, kiddos, we, we went home from the hospital two days later. Like mama's with baby, all the whole family's there. Now it's a preemie, not when there's certain issues. So Certain issues. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Brendan, man. Again, this is the same guy that cried over a compilation movie or clip being made from his family and friends thanking him for being a stand-up comedian. He cried, sobbed tears when he found out that Chris Alia was being cancelled for being a fucking pedo, right? Like, literally was crying and shaking. Now, don't get me wrong. Maybe he was only crying and shaking about the Chris Alia stuff because he was afraid the light was going to be shone on him. I think that's probably the most so the, the thinking behind it. He probably wasn't crying because of Chris. He was crying because he was afraid he was next to a chopping block and he probably knew he couldn't survive a cancelling. I think Chris could survive a cancelling easily because he's got a big fan base but i think brendan would be he'd be done right he couldn't survive a, a proper cancel culture thing it'll be it'll be over for him it'll be a rap but i think chris obviously could oh look he's got the wristband on for the hospital i wonder if he's gonna keep it on like fucking like fucking crush and rock will he keep this wristband on the whole week 
Let's see what he's gonna do. Because he's not showing any emotion, but maybe this is one of the, one of the things he keeps on. Like this little this little festival wristband he got from the hospital. It's like the baby comes out, and then it, you know, you're there with it. They're doing all the tests. Yeah, big up my guy Koila. Wagwan Koila, bang your fucking chest. The entire NBA <laughs> one holiday in Adam and Leonard's dream come true. Exactly. Oh my god, bro. I've not watched one minute of that show, that Adam and Leonard thing. I refuse, even if it's gonna be good content, good fucking for the channel. I I refuse to give that fucking shower of shit any fucking attention. But if any, if there ever was an example of somebody as a clout demon. That will do like he's definitely the lead fucking ambassador and proponent of the content over everything thing, isn't it? He will die on that content over everything hill to the point where he's literally whoring out his own wife, and it's like, no, thank you, no fucking thank you. And then you put in the NICU unit, and then you're just chilling without a kiddo. So then. <laughs> chilling with that kiddo as if like he went to go pick up an exhaust and it wasn't there <laughs> it didn't it didn't arrive yet the person who spoke on the phone got the drs wrong they're actually going to ship a new one from japan but then it's got to get sent through europe and it's not going to get here on time bro uh wifey's blood pressure came down but being a preemie they you know they're not supposed to come out early that's not the plan that wasn't the big man's plans upstairs but you know that blood big up ted you appreciate you brother the big man's that wasn't the big man's plans upstairs. Person had to get it out, so the the baby's still in the NIC unit. Everything was all good. Everything's all good. And like, yeah, maybe the baby come home on uh, Saturday, and you can call and check in on the baby. And they also have a mom. You can call and check in, so you're not just gonna be sitting there waiting and sleeping there all the time and maybe canceling podcasts and shit and saying, hey guys, I'm not going to be doing any streams. Please bear with me because I've got the fire emoji. Like, why are you even fucking streaming? Why are you even doing podcasts, really? Shouldn't you just be by the side of your family at this time? You're not going to get this time back. You can go back to doing your fucking content when the baby's back at home, right? Then you can have an excuse to leave your family. Cool. But surely at this moment should be the time where he's just there for his family, where need be. Instead, he's out of the house doing this stream telling te like again maybe i'm being a big fucking pussy maybe i'm being a simp maybe i'm being a cuck i don't know but this feels very odd he would do he would he literally will drop everything and travel across the fucking country to go see fucking joe in austin but when it comes to standing by and sitting by his wife and being there until the baby again i'm not saying he doesn't have to do content and quit because the baby's premature but surely for these next couple of weeks before the baby gets home or while the baby's still in the fucking hospitals getting getting checked up and shit just be there for your partner be there for your wife be there for your family and then when it's done and the baby's able to go home and everything's settled then start streaming again not a big deal that's part of the reason why making content and doing this stuff on your own works because it gives you that flexibility. Because if you have a full-time job, you couldn't do that, right? Um, you know, but maybe two two parents couldn't both take maternity leave. But when you got when you do when you have your own when you've kind of bet on yourself, as Brendan said, when you bet on yourself, part of betting yourself is that you're the boss. You call the shots, so you can take time off. Like, what the fuck? Monitor full time so you can watch it. So we're like watching, like you know, some helicopter parents. <laughs> Okay, so I said we watching. So maybe they send both people home. Maybe they don't let you stay home. So maybe they don't let you stay in the hospital. Maybe they, the hospital tells you you have to go home. You can't stay in the hospital. Cool. But I still think he should be at home with his wife, to be fair. Wherever she is, he should be. And then uh, you check in at 8 a.m. every morning. That tells how she did through the night. And she's like, yeah, she's eating. She was on oxygen because her lungs weren't fully developed. Jesus. But now she's breathing on her own. We're like, all right, cool. And then they're like... <laughs> All right, cool. I'll take the XL of that Supreme jacket of that premium box logo. I'll take an XL. I I really would like a large, but I'll take the XL. <laughs> and she, you know, it's her body temperature. She's holding body temperature. Like, all right, cool. And then we call <laughs> on Saturday. Like she had, she had their exact words. She had an episode last night. Like, oh god. And so they're like, yeah, she, her body temperature went down and her uh, heart rate went down. But then she fought on her own and came back. So, you know, she's not ready to go. Like, okay, cool. Like, maybe tomorrow. Call again at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning. My son's, my youngest son, who's for his birthday party. I'm like, this would be a great present for Bossy. They again, they have a strange family anyway, unit, in it? They have a strange family unit. Don't you think? So, 
the wife has an emergency C-section because of high blood pressure. The kid is born four weeks premature, but in that time, there's also a baby's birthday, one of their sons. But I'm assuming it's stressful in the house. So they still plan an elaborate, because if, you, if you've seen the pictures online, you'll see that's a, it's a pretty big party. They had like a fucking backdrop and balloons. They had a fucking horse. Is it a horse? Or like a pony in their garden and shit, right? For their fucking kid, for their birthday. It's like, it's some, it's some proper like, you know, LA shit. So they spent a lot of money and they went, did a lot of planning on the birthday. So I'm just thinking like, if you're going through all that as a family, we you just put that on a hold, or on pause? Don't the kid, aren't the kids kind of aware of what's going on? Like there's no mummy, daddy stressed out. Like they probably don't even want to have the, but they're probably not in the mood to celebrate their birthdays either because they're just a little bit nervous because they want to meet their fucking baby sister. No? What do you think? It's odd that they just, okay, we've got the baby's kid. Like, I don't know. Again, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm the fucking, I'm the idiot here. They want to see their sister so bad. They haven't seen her. The only person that's hold the baby is my wife for two minutes because you know she has to be in that weird bubble <laughs> he could name all the parts of his cars right he can name all the parts of his cars but he doesn't know the name of the whatever thing they put the baby in you'd imagine having a baby you'd know all these details because you're having a fucking baby you have all this knowledge of pregnancies and whatnot you just have this unnecessary knowledge because you're going through it uh bubble <laughs> Call Sunday morning, same thing. Had an episode last night at midnight. Like, fuck. Same thing. So at this point, you know, you're just wishing for the best and hopefully the, you know, the kiddos. <coughs> I thought you going to say you're wishing for the, <laughs> you're wishing for the best, expecting the worst. I thought you gonna, it is what it is. <laughs> I thought you going to say it is what it is. Oh my God, bro. A preemie, so. Please, please stop referring to your baby that's been born premature as a preemie. Please. They're not supposed to be out. So it is tough around the shop household. Not going to lie to you guys. It's been a tough week. Man. That face, that tough week, he means he's not feeling uncomfortable. He's not feeling comfortable, right? There's loads of fucking Spanish um, speaking extended family at the house. Because I'd imagine, right? Mexican household. When something like that goes down, they do what actual families are meant to do. And they all fucking buckle down and they all fucking join and kind of help out. I'm sure, you know, all the family, extended family are coming to help out to make the wife comfortable. That's probably why he feels like he can do the podcast. She's probably got enough family around her. So the Mexican household are in there. It's probably making him feel uncomfortable, right? <laughs> they were speaking Spanish in there. They were supporting her. There's loads of emotion. There's loads of empathy. There's loads of caring. And for this robot, for this narcissist, he just can't handle it. It's like, fuck this. I need to be on the road. I'm a road dog. I'm a comedian. I'm a beast. Beast of a dad. Beast of a, beast of a podcaster. So he decides to jump in his TRX and 1,000 horsepower later, he's at the fucking, you know, Thick Boy Studios to, telling us about his preemie baby. Jesus Christ, Brendan. Man, but I've never prayed so much in my life. I'm not a religious person. When stuff goes down like that, it's all you can really do, man. But uh Thanks for letting us know. <laughs> I'm not a religious person and I prayed this only this one time. <laughs> Just letting that note. Look, I, I don't really believe in God, but hey, you know, preemies, you know. <laughs> um, so shout out to the docs at Cedar Cyanide and they know what they're doing. And Cedar, is that how you pronounce it? Cedar Cyanide, as in like the poison. Is that how it's pronounced? Is it pronounced cyanide? Let me see the hospital. What's it, what's it called? See the site. Yeah, it's a hospital. It's a, it's, it's a really, it's a famous one, right? See the site. How do you pronounce it? Cyanide. How do you pronounce that? Whoops. Let's see. See the sign of medical center. Let's see, let's see how you pronounce this. Hmm. How to pronounce. Okay, there we go. Cyanide. Let's see. How to say cedar cyanide. <coughs> Hold on. 
What does it say here? How to correctly pronounce it? Let's see. Come. We are looking at how to pronounce the name of this hospital in Los Angeles, California. How do you say it? Cedars Sinai. Cedars Sinai. <laughs> Oh my god, he got it completely wrong. He said cedar cyanide, did he? Um the shout out to the docs at Cedar Cyanide and they know what they're <laughs> He said cedar cyanide and it's pronounced even look at how it's spelled though. It doesn't say cyanide, it says cyanai. Cyanai. Cedars cyanai. Why would you say cyanide? Wait, it's not even spelled that way. Sign is spelled with a C. He's, this is an S. Is Brendan redacted for real? Do you, do some of you think Brent does Brendan have dyslexia? Do you think maybe he has undiagnosed dyslexia? Is that is that what it is, or has he just got CTE? Is that a dyslexic thing? Because this is cyan cyanide or Sinai. Like you could say Sinai. Or Cine or something, right? But why would you say cyanide? What do you guys think? Dyslexic, CTE, or just redacted? <laughs> what do you think? I don't. It's also I don't give a f yeah. Exactly, Z. Probably I don't give a fuck. Um, uh, uh, he's stupid. CTE. He's just dumb. He doesn't even try to learn. He's redacted. All of the above. <laughs> domo uh, Domo Agro. <laughs> <laughs> redacted CTE and dyslexic yo look how he's pronounced hear the guy again hear him hear him say hear this guy here cedars sinai cedars sinai cedars sinai. Cedar. sinai now hear this redact they do man but um the shout out to the docs at cedar cyanide and they know what <laughs> Doesn't know the doesn't know what the bubble's called. Doesn't know the name of the hospital. Let his wife go to hospital by herself when she got the emergency C section. Oh no, when she was yeah, when she got it, right? Then he rushed there later. He didn't even go to like get the blood pressure thing done. And refers to the baby as a preemie. Absolute beast of a dad. Beast of a fucking dad. Fucking hell. The bubble, you know. Like she's playing for the fucking Lakers what they're doing and um yeah you just hope for the best and i'm sure to work out and she's new so she's not supposed to be here right now she's, supposed to <laughs> she's new like you just picked up a new full level 50 it's a new it's a new you know it's fresh off the lot stock <laughs> oh my god bro he's talking about it like she's a birkin supposed to be in a, cook another three weeks so she's cooking cooking for another three weeks yo in that little uh incubator device there and hopefully she fights through it and she'll be all right she's already a feisty one so i think <laughs> she's a feisty one like it's a pug like it's a rescue or something right <laughs> having some tests she's got to go to the vet yo he is awesome man this guy is awesome again i don't i i wonder if this is like a form of narcissism where because it doesn't revolve around him i guess it's one of full narcissism right because it does nothing to do with him he almost doesn't care maybe that's what it is Maybe that's a narcissist trait. Like, it actually has nothing to do with him, technically. It, even though it does, but it technically doesn't. So he doesn't really care about it. It's almost dismissive. It's like, oh, fucking Thanksgiving ruined. I can't eat anything. There's no food. Wife didn't cook because she's fucking, she had to get a C-section. So dramatic. <laughs> you know? Wow. I think should be okay. But yeah, it's tough, man. It was a tough, long, long week. So it is what it is, man. My Thanksgiving dinner, my family was... <laughs> it is what it is. Straight onto the food. Straight onto the food. It is what it is, man. See the cyanide. Gone. They're at the hospital. I had to come back and uh, get bags and stuff for the kiddos. So my Thanksgiving dinner was straight up a large pepperoni pizza. I told you guys, man. I like to mix it up. And it was... A do we care about that, really? Why are you telling us you had a pepperoni pizza? Why is that the fourth thing in your mind? Like, 
is he annoyed that he didn't get a full Thanksgiving dinner? That he wasn't be able to. He wasn't able to post his fucking mac and cheese on the timeline. Nah, this guy is. There's something wrong with him, bro. Again, this would be normal if he didn't cry over Crystalia being exposed as a pedo, or when he cried over that fucking thank you video from all his family and friends. This wouldn't be a problem. But the fact that he cries over that shit, right? I thought we were gonna fight. I thought we were gonna fight. And then he has no emotion over this baby. No visible or overt emotion over a baby that's been born four weeks premature and his wife had to get an emergency C section. Yo. I thought it was gonna be cool, so I had a large pepperoni pizza and watched Twin Flames on Netflix. Not cool, man. It's kinda sad. <laughs> Not cool. Not yeah, exactly, Josie. The baby and the wife he take the attention. If you're a narcissist, that probably is not cool, isn't it? If you're a, baby, you're a narcissist, it doesn't work. Um, what are you saying here? Uh, he had a dominance and still a better plate than Jim. <laughs> Quite like, this ain't type of jokes. There's a fucking preemie in a vat of cyanide at the moment, okay? This is not a fucking time to joke, Coiler. There's a baby in a vat of cyanide at the moment. I don't want to hear your dominoes jokes. Dad says... Selective empathy is legit psycho is is legit is legitimately psychotic. Yeah, that's a that, that's a very good term. Selective empathy. That's what he has, isn't it? Selective empathy. Like fucking hell, bro. Not as cool as I thought. Having Thanksgiving pizza dinner by yourself is not cool. So why are you even having dinner by yourself? Why are you not why are you not having it with your kids? Why why are you why are you not taking the kids away from the the, the wife and maybe keeping them occupied and then let like Yo, this this guy might be the worst. He might be the worst. So the kids are with the wife at the hospital. He comes back and has pizza by himself. Is that what he's saying? He didn't even do like the dad thing and get the kids, the two sons back home with him to give the mum some space to be with the daughter by herself there with the family and the other mums, right? And the other abuelas and whatnot. Nah, he's just going to leave them there and then go and get a pizza for one by himself. <laughs> oh, fucking hell, Brendan, man. Come on, Brendan, please. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 Breaking news. Not cool. It's kind of sad. And he's smiling. Breaking news. Not cool. Kind of sad. Smile. But he was so he found time to apply just for men. He found time to wear his fucking Dave Chappelle outfit, right? His little boiler suit thing, right? His little Dave Chappelle thing. He found the time to do that, but he didn't have time to take his kids back home and take them, you know, take some burden off his off his off his wife. Or just join the join them all there. Join them all there. Distract the kids, hang out with them, you know, play catch in the fucking parking lot with them in the hospital. Whatever. Hospitals usually have a lot of fucking shit for kids to like entertain themselves with because they know kids will stay with their family and shit, don't want to be away from them and whatnot, right? Nah, I got a podcast, man. I got to get back to Thick Boy and tell them about Ian Gary and his crazy wife and the Sean Strickland drama, right? Everyone needs to hear my opinion on what's happening so far. Everyone needs to hear my opinion on PFL, right? They're dying to hear my opinion on, on it. Yo, man, surely, surely this guy might be one of the beasts of a dad's here. Pizza was delicious and I hate myself after I ate it, but that's where we're at. That's where we're at, fam. I thought he's going to say good. I thought he's going to start doing his Joko thing. Good. Been on a strict diet, getting ready for this kiddo. <laughs> I've been on a strict diet, waiting for the kid, getting ready for the kiddo. The diet, me, my Thanksgiving ruined. Like, have you noticed something? This all is him just vocalizing his annoyance that his wife had to have a premature birth, a premature pregnancy, sorry, and the kid is now premature. It's all straight annoyance. That's what he's come from. Oh, God almighty, this guy, man. And I uh, decided to depress, eat that large pepperoni pizza from Domino's. And Domino's, shout out to them being open on Thanksgiving. <laughs> shout out to Domino's. But no, like, um, and obviously for my wife, stay strong. I really hope that, you know, da, 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 she's a fucking trooper. Like, no real, no real nice, comforting, great words about the wife, right? Just shout out to Domino's, though. And shout out to Cyanide. <laughs> it is what it is. Exactly 7.30. Fucking hell. 
I mean, they got that pizza in about 25 minutes piping hot. I devoured that thing, and I felt awful. I felt absolutely terrible. Been a slow, uh, let's get into the fights, man. Uh, news on the truck, my truck. Oh, my God. Let's get into the fights. News on the truck. These fucking segues are fucking insane. You wouldn't think that this guy had such a traumatic, because you'd think there's some, there's some sort of, trauma attached to this sort of shit right some sort of stress again maybe not trauma is not the right word maybe i'm being too fucking um i'm being too dramatic right maybe i'm being too dramatic let's reduce the fucking language let's kind of dial it back a bit you'd imagine it's quite stressful right you'd think you'd see it in him disheveled whatever nothing no, no nothing 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 let's get to the fights anyway so ian gary fucking hell man <laughs> He's a psycho. He's a psycho. That goes in. The Ford Lightning goes in. Not even, a, not even a pause to like gather his thoughts. Not even like a. I don't want to get emotional here. Zero. Just he spoke about it as if he read some news article online about it. Fucking hell. Tomorrow he'd probably he'd probably be sadder if he read this about Conor McGregor. God forbid. If Conor McGregor had the same thing, he'd probably be a little bit more cut up about it. Bro my boy eddie had addiction to get that thing figured out so i can count down the days <laughs> straight into trx news or lightning whatever truck news right he went from talking about his preemie to talking about his trucks that's probably why he's really annoyed he didn't have time to do more mods on his trucks and shit <laughs> the baby's taken away from prime trx and lightning time god almighty bro beast of a dad i'm that bad boy so I cannot wait to figure out what's going on with that and unravel that bad boy and get to work on it. So when I say get to work, it means find the best people for the job and watch them do the work because I don't know what I'm doing. But it's still fun. Uh, and of course, the bit, the moustache still hasn't been lined up. I'm never going to get over this lack of lining up a moustache. Why would you spend all this money on hats all this money on fucking shoes, but not go to a barber and just get your fucking shit lined up. Why? Please someone tell me why he doesn't do that. Or is that like a white guy thing? Do white guys not like to get their beards lined up at a fucking barber shop? I'd imagine if you don't want to spend the money to do it all the time, just do it once. So you have like the guide of doing it. Cause that's what I like to do, right? Like you might go, you might get your hair cut and maybe sometimes you're not going to get it. Cause I might, I might get my, my hair trimmed two weeks, right? Every two weeks and stuff. But maybe I might miss, I might just do it once a month, but at least you've got a little bit of a guide. So if you want to touch it up, you've got something to follow. Like whether it's a beard or whether you've got somebody, you know, you can kind of keep the, whatever you can keep up what they did. But this guy just, I'm just going to line it up. And one size was longer. <laughs> <laughs> it's always that side is longer isn't it like what what's going on here like honestly spend all that money on shoes and hats but you can't get your beard lined up fucking hell so that's the news on the lightning man we'll figure out we'll know tomorrow i'll keep you guys posted i'm sure i'll post something we'll know tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> that concludes the baby segment <laughs> he ends it with lightning talk Yo, Brendan is fucking insane. In fucking insane. But to be fair, to be fair, let's look at what happened with the pregnancy. If I remember correctly, I remember seeing clips on the Fire and the Kids subreddit of Joanna, his wife, complaining about being pregnant. Like it was, I don't know if it's like a bit or if this is a thing that women are actually, some women actually don't enjoy being pregnant, but she was vocalizing it a lot on her social media. It felt like she was on Facebook or something, like oversharing. Oh, I hate being pregnant. This is annoying. Blah, blah, blah. Like kind of like, you know, tongue in cheek, but it just felt a little bit odd. And I feel like sometimes, maybe I'm a bit of a drama queen in this sort of stuff, but I feel like sometimes you have to watch what you say. Like there is a lot of power in your words. So if you're out here complaining about being pregnant, I don't know what sort of vibes that's putting out there into the universe, right? And then you're also not drinking water because you don't believe in drinking water when you're fucking pregnant. It's fucking insane. Forget drink, forget in general, but if you're just not drinking water anyway, it's odd. So sometimes be careful what you wish for. You, you said you didn't want to be pregnant. Well, now you're not pregnant. You know what I mean? Look what happened. But some of those things that they were coming out from on social media were odd, but I, I have a sympathy for her because I feel like she, she strikes me as she's kind of really lonely. 
I get a lot of like really lonely vibes from her. And again, just checking her in constant here and there, but she seems very, very lonely. And can you, you know, you can't blame her, right? Having Brendan as a husband, he's probably not the most, you know, he doesn't probably like spending time with his wife, I'd imagine, right? <laughs> I don't think they have like a lot of conversations. <laughs> I don't know. In addition to the weird dynamic there, I think she probably spends, I would bet you, his wife probably speaks to their kids more than they speak to each other. I bet you. I bet you she speaks to their, she speaks to her sons more than she speaks to Brendan. Like, it's fucking bizarre. If anything, sometimes on the social media, it looks like her brother is like the dad. He's always there, you know, like, like present like the uncle like he really like he's involved you know what i mean he's really there so i don't again i don't know but hey i'm i'm wishing them the best prayers and thoughts go out to joanna and shit hopefully everything goes well and that baby comes out good um usually i think with modern science and the way hospitals are even if a kid is born premature it's very rare that anything bad happens usually it's just a precaution to make sure everything's good whatever it may be and, you know, they've got the money and the funds to be able to, you know, whatever, you know, um, thing that needs to be done in terms of medically and services and stuff. They can, they've got all the fucking funds to afford the ability to kind of make sure she gets the best care. So I'm sure everything's going to be cool. But I'm just, I don't know. I just think if it was me and I was having my first daughter, like, I'd be petrified, bro. Like, if something like this happened, I'd be fucking distraught. The last thing I'd be doing is wanting to fucking stream and do fucking podcasts and talk about Ian Gary and Sean Strickland. I wouldn't give a fuck about PFL or Dana White or the UFC fucking, or fucking DraftKings and shit. Like, what? Do you know what I mean? I'm worried about my wife, number one. I'm panicking about that because I'm a fucking dad. I'm, I'm used to like, looking after kids anyway. So you don't want to, you know, you want to make sure you're looking after your wife and she's there to help you out. You're having your first daughter. You're worried about that. You're trying to keep your fucking kids in check and not wanting to make them stressed out, right? Your two sons you have. You're keeping the household together whatever you just dare you're present the last one i'll be doing is fucking podcasts and shit or if i do do one you'll see me really stressed and sad and whatever but this guy is like it is what it is <laughs> she was she was she, <laughs> she came out of the oven too quickly <laughs> the fucking frozen pizza wasn't cooked all the way through it was you know when you get you know when you do a frozen pizza and you don't preheat the oven and you just whack it in really high and then it cooks on the outside but there's a cook in the middle that's how he's talking like, oh fuck man or when you over or when you overcook a frozen pizza and it's really too crisp on the top and it's kind of burned that's how he's talking he's talking like oh fuck man it's even worse when you buy a frozen pizza you make the first one wrong you fuck it up and then you've only got one left it's like fuck you know what i mean like and yes i've eaten two frozen don't lie you haven't had them before right sometimes you get a pack of frozen pizza and you get two in a pack i've eaten two in a pack like that like that I'm sure you have done as well. Don't make me out to be the only fat one here. I've done that. I'm sure you have as well. Okay? We've all done this. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, cyanide is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. I want to see that one more time. That cyanide bit was so good. I said, hold on. I'm sure that hospital is not called cyanide. Why, did we, why would you call a hospital cyanide? And it's like, no, it's not pronounced cyanide. It's pronounced how it's you're written. You're looking at how to pronounce the name of this hospital in Los, Los Angeles, Angeles, California. How do you say it? Cedars Sinai. Cedars Sinai. Cedars Sinai. <laughs> That's it. It's not hard. Cedars Sinai. Not Cedars Cyanide. What a fucking redact, bro. Papa the redact never stops surprising you. Never stops surprising you.